episode three of the Spinning Dreams podcast. My name is Laura and I'm coming to you from northwestern Wales in the southern part of Snowdonia and it's been a while. It's been about I guess three four weeks since I last spoke to you so a lot has happened and I'm looking forward to sharing some things with you. Um, Yeah it's been a really um, nice time. Mark and I have been settling in here at our house a bit more. Um, I've mainly been focusing on getting my art studio kind of space ready. So we've ordered um, a desk for me and I'm just, yeah, I'm looking forward to setting that up. So that's good. The weather has also been really nice here. Um, Nice and summery. It's the middle of July. So um, we may go down to the seaside sometime and um, check that out we haven't really done that yet since we moved. So that's going to be nice. Yeah, so uh, let's get into the knitting stuff. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so first I guess um, I should talk about what I'm wearing. Um, This is the Magnolia cardigan, which I think I've spoken about in every episode, um, in both other episodes, and I have finished it. It is wonderful. I feel really great about it. Um, it has all of the details that I like. I'll show you some of them. But just to say that this pattern, the Magnolia Chunky, is by Camilla Vad. Um, you can find it on Ravelry. And the pattern construction is very simple. It's a top-down raglan. And um, yeah, the increases are very um, straightforward, I thought. And there's a lace detail at the bottom of the the cardigan body and then also there's a little bit of lace on the sleeves which um, just add a bit of detail Uh, but the lace pattern is very intuitive I didn't feel that it was too complicated and it also has um, some nups which I mentioned last time about um, choking your baubles or nups (laughs) Um, and they are working really well I've blocked it and it fits really nicely. I made it a a little bit oversized so that I could wear it in any season of my life, Um, however old I am, hopefully it'll last that long, Um, and whatever shape I am (laughs) throughout life. And um, yeah, I think it's it's got great drape. It's La Bien Aime, um, Merino, DK, and their Silk Mohair blend. three strands held together, um, and yeah, I just love it. The buttons were also from La Bienname, um, and they're just like a ceramic, a natural ceramic with a blue glaze, which I think looks really fancy. Um, for the button band, I actually um, did something a little bit different. Um, I've seen other people have a button band like this where you for the button side you really uh, want to anchor those buttons to something a little bit more sturdy um, because otherwise you're pulling on your your knitted band and that can get kind of wonky and out of shape and it can also put strain on the buttons so what I did was I I used some fabric scraps that I had um, on hand it's linen and I made a bias binding. I didn't actually cut it on the bias because I didn't have enough fabric to make a bias binding. I, I just cut it straight on the grain. Um, and, and then I, you can see I used um, some, just some like leftover buttons that I had from other projects or hand-me-downs from different people um, to act as an anchor for the, the fancy buttons. Um, and I, yeah, everything's just hand stitched. I didn't use the machine at all. My machine actually is in Tanzania still, so I couldn't do that. But I really find hand stitching to be 
uh, meditative and soothing and much more my pace. So I really enjoy that. Um, the fabric itself, the linen, is actually something I want to talk about. Um, so I'll, I'll share about that now as well. Um, I got a, like a remnant package from a, a wonderful lady who does um, these beautiful linen dresses. She's based in Kaliningrad in Russia, and she she makes these amazing, rustic, beautiful linen dresses. I actually can't find her on Etsy right now, and I'm wondering, I'm worried actually, that maybe she's been having a hard time because of everything that's going on and has had to pull out for right now. Um, but all that to say, I really, really am glad that I ordered from her. It was in March, um, so it was a while ago, but... Um, she's called Molimia Life is her shop name and <clears throat> she's just got a really beautiful aesthetic and great customer service. I really, really enjoyed meeting her and her fabric is just gorgeous, I think. And she sells these packs of remnants to be kind of, um, eco-conscious and aware, um, and not waste, you know, so that goes in line with what I with my values. So here's the fabric that I used for the button band. And it's just a really lovely green with uh, floral sprays or leaf sprays, a um, little bit of a beige and yellow highlights. And then here's a sampling. She gave me quite a few different, uh, quite a range of different textures and um, patterns in the package. And it was, it was random. I said what colors I prefer, which was on the natural side. Um, but she just, yeah, gave me what she had on hand. And I really, really like all of them in the end. <laughs> so that's great. Um, and then also I wanted to show you her packaging was great. <laughs> and I just think packaging goes such a long way. So she sent me also these little stickers that are special to her shop. Um... And I don't know what I'm going to use them for yet, but I just think they're so sweet. And I thought it was such a lovely touch. And what a great thing to have um, for your, your hand making. You know, just something that represents your, your values and your style and everything in a sticker form. <laughs> so that was really, really sweet. And she also sent me some little wooden buttons, heart buttons. Hope that's showing up okay. Um, so she sent me three of those as well. So I'll let to say Molinia Life, if we ever find her again on Etsy, I would really uh, recommend uh, supporting her because I just think she's she's got a great thing going on there. So um, yeah, that's that's the Magnolia cardigan. That's the, the Molinia Life fabric scraps that I used for this project. And um, yeah, that's one finished object. There we are. I'm really happy. Um, next, Mark and I have some actually some really exciting news that we've been sitting on for a while. Um, but we are actually expecting our first child. Um, it was a complete surprise this year. Um, and we're so happy. We've been hoping for a baby for um, about 12 years and it just, um, yeah, never worked out for us. So we were completely surprised that this was the year 2020, the year of surprises for all of us, um, that it's going to happen for us. So, um, very exciting. And I wanted to share that today because I have a finished object, um, that is related to babies. Um, and so it's this anchors bonnet. Um, which is by Petite Knit, and I just think it's got a great design uh, feature here with this kind of um, offset ribbing, and it's uh, very simple, and I think it's pretty pretty much gender neutral, which is um, a highlight, I think, as well. You can see the back here is um, just a simple decrease, and it was very, very quick to whip up. There's an I-cord, there are two I-cord um, like little strings to tie around under the chin. 
So I'm looking forward to using that. Our baby is due in November, uh, end of November. So it's gonna be cold here in Wales. So I get to knit all the things, <laughs> which I'm really happy about. So yeah, it's very exciting. Um, I can't even remember what this wool, what this yarn is. It's some kind of leftover and I just, you know, used it up. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think it turned out really well and I'm looking forward to um, snuggling a baby head in there <laughs> at some point. And I think that's it for finished objects. So I have a few things um, in progress right now. Um, one of which I mentioned before is the bot Botanist Cardigan by Thea Coleman. And I have to be honest, um, my mind hasn't been the sharpest <laughs> lately. Um, and I'm putting it down to hormones, but who knows, it could just be me. We'll see how long it lasts. Um, and this has been a real challenge for me, this, this pattern. Um, and so I've, I've been wanting to not make a lot of mistakes. So I've been working really slowly on it, uh, knowing that I am prone to mistakes right now. So I, all that to say, I don't have a lot of progress, um, but you can see here that I have started it. And let me see if I can, it's quite long because it's all in one piece to start. You, it's a bottom up um, construction. And so you can see that um, I've got a few stitch markers on there. Um, and I've started the ribbing at the bottom, the hem. And I've got a couple of different cables, um, cable details. And right now I've just finished the cable setup for the bigger cables that will come in. Um, if you remember, <clears throat> the botanist car cardigan is kind of an Aran, um, like cable fisherman style cardigan. So it's going to be a lot of texture and a lot of cables, which I'm really, really looking forward to. And I keep daydreaming about how, oh, I'm going to wear it there. Oh, I really wish I had my botanist cardigan <laughs> ready now because I would love to wear it today. Um, so I think it's, it's going to go with a lot of different things. So I still feel really good about the wool, which is Fisherman's Wool again by Lion Brand. Um, and I, you know, so far the pattern um, instructions are very clear. I'm struggling though to have it in a digital format, um, either on my phone or the computer. Um, so I'm probably going to have it, you know, printed out. I don't like to do that typically, but for something as complex as working three charts at the same time and setup rows and all of the cabling and then the combination of that with my mind right now, um, I think I need to have the highlighter and a physical copy in front of me. So I'll probably do that. Um, I also have a notes page in my in my bullet journal um, to keep track of what I'm doing. So all that to say, it's going really well overall. I feel really good about it. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a slow a slow one, I think. Um, but that's okay. I'm okay with that as long as I can get it done at some point. Hopefully before winter, maybe autumn would be nice. <laughs> so you'll probably be hearing about that one again. So next on my needles is a small project, another small one. Um, and this one is actually really special because as I have mentioned, we have a spinning wheel now. We've been spinning. I should say Mark has been spinning because he has really taken off. He's spinning every day, um, producing lots of good meterage for me. <laughs> Um, and I really wanted to just dive in and start a project. So here's his hand spun. Um, and this is the Blue Face Luster uh, Welsh Cross um, blend of, of wool uh, from Hilltop Cloud Fiber, or Fiber Shop with Hilltop Katie. You can find her on Instagram. And I thought, let's start small with a small project. And so I've done a little baby sock and it's got a rib cuff and a normal heel flap um, with a gusset and I've done my normal three stitches of garter along the heel flap which looks really cute I think on this because it's so small and a normal um, toe decrease with the Kitchener 
actually, is it Kitchener? No, it's not Kitchener. It's um, just like a, a pull through at the end. You pull it through several stitches. Um, and it works, it's working pretty well here um, with that wool that Mark spun in. So that's really special. And I think it's gonna look really cute. And it's gonna be super warm um, on a little baby foot. <laughs> So I've got sock number two on the needles. So that's another work in progress. Um, and you'll notice I'm using these needles, which I actually cannot remember what they're called, but they're special and they're, they're ones that I use often for my socks. Um, and it's a three set, a three needle set that um, has a bit of a flexible uh, part there um, in the middle. And then you work, so you have two live needles with your work on them. And then you have your third needle that, you know, you work, work your live stitches that way. So it's a little bit like Magic Loop, I think. Um, and a little, yeah, I think it, it feels a lot like Magic Loop to me, but with just shorter needles and more needles. <laughs> so I, I liked it so far. Um, I don't know, I really like Magic Loop though, so I might go back to that, but I don't have uh, the right needles to do Magic Loop right now. Um, so I might need to get some for that. So yeah, I think that's that's it for me for works in progress right now, and that feels like enough. <laughs> so one of the things that we have been really excited about and moving to Wales is all of the sheep around and all of the wool production. Um, or the possibility for wool production um, and processing wool into fiber that is usable in our artwork and craft. So we were really happy when we met somebody locally who is already keeping sheep for fiber and producing her own wool and her own yarns and dyeing them naturally. And so we went and met her at her home, um, socially distanced. <laughs> Um, we met in her garden, and she had a stand up with all of her hand dyes. Her name was Christine. Um, and it was just great. We only had a half an hour with her because we had another meeting, but we could talk to her about, you know, we could talk for hours probably with her about it, about um, hand dyeing and sheep in the area and the fleece that they pr produce. Um, and so it was a really great meeting I'm like we're both really happy that we met her and we ended up getting one of her skeins of hand dyed um you know wool from her sheep and it's this one here um and I can't remember the breed name I'm not sure that she mentioned it actually um but it's from one of her sheep she has two at the moment two sheep and so she had it locally spun she didn't spin it herself though she is a spinner um, and it's spun up into a DK weight, and it looks like it's a worsted weight. Um, and it's dyed, hand dyed with birch bark um, and with an alum mordant. So you can see it's kind of this very, very light, mustardy, beigey, um, yeah, color. It's really, really nice. I, I think it's um, a really good kind of neutrally yeah yellowish color and I think I have no idea what I'm gonna make with it yet but <laughs> I just thought it was so cool that birch bark could give this amazing tone um, and I was just so happy to learn from her about that process and we've been thinking about hand dyeing with natural um, plants and and products for a while now, um, well, since we met her, um, and I've been wanting to for years, and I have done a little bit with turmeric in the past on a cotton, kind of a cellulose, you know, cotton fiber, and that turned out so beautifully. It was so inspiring. It was a good one to start with um, because it turned out so well. But um, yeah, because Mark has been producing so much natural, kind of a white, creamy color of yarn with his spinning. We thought, well, that's the perfect base to try out some dyeing. So that's what we've been doing this week. Actually, Mark has done it. Um, and I'll show you. So this is his, some of his latest hand spun, which I showed you the other one with the baby sock. But this one is, I think, 
maybe more uh, representative of his work lately and it's just becoming more and more consistent and really um, beautiful probably like a, a sport to maybe DK light DK weight is what I'm guessing but I haven't knit with it extensively so I need to keep swatching and see how it comes out but that's the cream base and so you can see um, with the avocados that he used this weekend this is the color that we got so he used avocado peels and pits and in the slow cooker and I just think this is so great like what a great color it's a muted kind of rusty pinky yeah kind of brownish undertones it looks so good and we've just been marveling at how um, the you know nature's colors are always <laughs> so great. Like they always look so good together too. Like look at that. That's that's a great combination um, just from plant matter. Um, so we'll see how we didn't use any mordant because the the pits have tannins in them apparently, which you know tannin is in tea and and coffee and other other um, plants and it apparently can fix um, the color to the fiber uh, as a mordant but we've had one he's rinsed it once um, and I've yet to wash it with a soap so we'll see how it washes up um, I think it will maintain as a lot of this this uh, pigment but we'll see We'll see how it goes. But yeah, really happy about that. Um, so I may, I'm thinking about what to do with these two colors together because I think they look really nice next to each other. And I'm thinking about maybe doing a baby cardigan. I'm not sure I could do the Arnica cardigan by Orlan Souk. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to see. That's, that's what's in my head right now. So yeah, it's just been so fun having both of us involved in the fiber process uh, it's very exciting <laughs> to go down this rabbit hole of dyeing and spinning and yeah Mark's been washing our big fleece um, I mentioned we had this big clean clean fleece from Mark's sister Lizzie um, and we didn't know what we were going to do with it but Mark started washing we have process now and we're just waiting to get the combs or the, the carters that we're going to use to brush it or to comb it, to straighten it into the, the preparation that we want for spinning. So yeah, we're, we're moving along. We're feeling really good about it all. And we look forward to sharing our progress with you more as we develop this. And um, yeah, it's just been really inspiring. So I think that's it for the fiber um, content for me this time. And... Um, the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, that I've been doing some artwork and Mark and I have um, just put some of my artwork onto some greeting cards and they should be coming in the post um, we were hoping for today so that I could show you but it hasn't quite arrived so I'll have to show you next time but that's something that's um, giving me some energy creatively so I'm hoping that um, yeah I can show you um, what I've done with that and um, yeah, I think um, that pretty much wraps it up for me today. And um, I just want to say thank you to all of the subscribers, all of my subscribers. Um, and thank you for showing up to my episodes so far and for taking the time to hear and listen um, about all my creative things. And um, I know a lot of people, when they reach a certain number of subscribers, they do a giveaway. So I am thinking about that. Um, maybe 100 would be the number um, that I'm aiming for, um, shooting for, for the giveaway. So just a heads up, it's on my mind. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say thank you um, for tuning in. And if you're new, please feel free to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you know when I've done my next episode because I don't do it regularly yet. I don't have a schedule. Um, but yeah, I hope that you enjoy all of the making and all of the creating that you're doing during the summertime or winter, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and I look forward to catching up with you next time. Take care. Bye.